Hi everyone. I uh, I was watching a video on how to replace the polarization film on a SeaDo GTI model. Uh, this is a 2012. I think there was another video I was watching where somebody was doing it with a 2015 model, and I wanted to try it out to see what would uh, what would come of it. Um, but I wanted to. I essentially couldn't see anything out of this screen at all. Um, I actually broke the, uh, the LCD glass kind of on purpose because as you can see, <clears throat> I actually don't have a problem with the polarization film. It, uh, it looks like there was other damage inside of the LCD itself. And before I broke the glass there, I tried plugging it into the, uh, into the wiring harness back there and tried to hook it back up and then I held the the new polarization film here over it to see if I could see anything coming out of the screen and I couldn't and as you can see this is the old polarization film it's a little bit damaged from taking it off but in reality here it really wasn't that damaged it wasn't there wasn't really any sun damage to it you can see right through it it's not burned it doesn't look like or anything um, just want to make sure you can see that it, it's pretty good it really wasn't that bad so I don't know I wanted to get under the screen but I really think that was a stupid idea anyway I just want to see if I could I, I knew I was gonna have to get a new gauge cluster anyway at this point but I thought I might go through what it is that you have to do to get to this so as you can see, this is the assembly with your mirrors, and it goes it goes over your dash like this. That's typically how it sits. For this one, I only had four T15 screws. You can see the two under here. Let me get that in focus for you. So I got that guy and that guy, and then it's the same on the other side. I didn't have any on top here so this actually a little bit of work just came off um, and I wanted to show you I think there uh, I wanted to show you how actually the entire cluster came out just so you can see it here um, so we can actually just take the plastic piece I already cut this out so I guess it'll be a little easier to show you but this sort of just form fits in here. Check. All right, see how it kind of just slid in there? I'll make sure you get this in focus. So, as you can see, there are tabs here. There's a tab here, but I don't think that really does anything. And then there's one up here. See these? This little top piece here that you can see that's what slips under the plastic so I can actually just pop this back in yeah I didn't break this taking it apart either it was already like that but see this is actually pretty sure that's completely in right now so you really just see this tab right up here you just push that down with a screwdriver you probably need two screwdrivers and you just pop it out so I'm just gonna leave that in there um, I guess maybe I'll just show you quickly. So you just kind of, without trying to damage it too much, you just do this and you can pop it right out. You can already see it. It'll wiggle, but yeah, I don't want to, I don't have two hands right now, so I don't really want to go crazy with it, but that's how it is. And then I guess there's two tabs on the bottom there, but you can just, you don't really need to do those top two and it kind of pops right out. So. Here comes the hard part. That's actually the easiest part. Um, where did I put everything? So this piece, I actually just took a Dremel and I cut around it. Um, and you can see it's very rough. I had a plastic welding kit too, in case I wanted to put this back together. Um, but Give me one second here. I'm actually going to take out that housing I just installed in the ski. Um, and I want to show you what it looks like when I put it in there. So one sec.
30 seconds to do this. Just make sure you press down on these tabs on both sides here. And these are the tabs that hold it in. I haven't moved it much so I could show you. Uh, another piece I wanted to show you, the kind of razor blade I use is a uh, box cutter, but flat. That's probably the only way you're gonna be able to do it. And this was all sitting on here in a way that it was kind of hard for me to remove it, but just taking the razor blade, going around the glass, and then just using some lubricant and scraping it down. It worked pretty easily until I could just take my, my hands and peel it off. Um, but that part's pretty easy. Um, especially if it's really damaged because then it should just peel right off. It should be brittle. Um, but. So that's how easy it'll be to remove your gauge. Mine's obviously in two pieces now. So, uh, because I already cut it but yours will be in one piece. This is how it came out. Um, and I recommend a pretty heavy duty device, Dremel, die cutter, whatever you have. Um, this took me a while. Uh, there is a plastic seam that you can see where it's a little bit um, recessed all the way around. And it'll look like you're cutting through clear at some point and I'm not sure what that was but I'm pretty sure I was just cutting into the uh, clear plastic guard that goes around um, so I mean you probably do a little damage there but nothing that you can see um, so I went about probably a quarter inch down maybe a little more then I took a nice handy flathead and just kind of went around the the edges and corners are very hard to do, um, but you will probably immediately separate the bottom and the top. Um, and like when you're when you're actually doing the prying here, you'll see it separated from the uh, the clear. But I don't know that part. I mean, you're gonna have to put seven hundred bucks into a new one anyway. So it, if you didn't do this, so like really damaging is it? In, damaging it isn't so bad. Um, and plus, if you're going to be plastic welding this anyway, you know, somebody's going to know you were tampering with it anyway, and it's not really for aesthetics at that point. It's just to save you about 700 bucks. Um, I'll put the link to where I got this piece of film. It was really fast shipping, really easy to get, but um, I don't think I'm going to need that because, like I said, uh, this screen uh it was already damaged you can see spots in it something around the edge I, that's probably not fixable so but anyway i did it i would have been successful if i could just attach that polarization film to it and and get it going but because of the damage behind the screen there it's really not going to be useful to me and it looks like i'm going to have to probably just get a new one um, I guess the one thing um, that I would suggest is I had this this Dremel here. This is a uh, Dremel light and it's battery powered. Just don't get this if you're doing it because the battery life sucks and it's not powerful enough to cut through this efficiently. So just don't do that. Um, I guess one other thing I wanted to show you was this cable. This cable is not you know that hard to do but essentially when it's plugged in this big piece by my thumb is actually pushed in and I actually have removed it just by pulling with my with my finger and my thumb here like this and it popped right off actually kind of abruptly um, so that part's actually pretty pretty simple so I guess I'll be throwing a new cluster in here and I am a little bit nervous about what happens with the hours on this machine and what happens there, but I guess we'll, we'll have to look that up and learn. So this is all possible. It can be done. And, you know, if my LCD wasn't bad already, we'd be good to go. Anyway, have a good one.